Hi everyone, we're back and today the topic for discussion is the new nurse, what are electrolytes? Electrolytes are simply minerals in the body and body fluids that give the electrical charge necessary to keep the heart, kidneys, nerves and other vital organs functioning well. Either too much or too little can cause serious consequences. Sodium, potassium, calcium, bicarbonate and magnesium are all considered to be electrolytes. Uh, signs and symptoms would include fatigue. People who are having problems with their electrolytes may experience things like fatigue, muscle weakness, leg cramps, seizures. Yes, I've seen it happen with hyponatremia, EKG changes, chest discomfort, and we can go on and on. Urinary output may be diminished, and edema, swelling, and sports drinks, usually when people are in the outdoors, they may take sports drinks or bananas to replace their potassium. What might cause potassium in, uh, an electrolyte imbalance? Well, here are some of the causes of electrolyte imbalances. Excessive sweating, fluid loss leading to dehydration, like the trauma patient, the patient in the sur surgical suite who's lost lots of fluid after having their bodies open up and major intervention, excessive vomiting, uh, blood pressure medication, sometimes they do dehydrate patients, potassium depletion, and like I said before, massive blood loss. Now, typically what happens, treatment is directed at the cause. Now, patients in the outdoors, I've given you an example of people walking out here in the desert. Often people who go to areas, they leave an area where it's very humid and then go to a very dry area, desert type of climate. It, never, it doesn't even cross their minds that they may slowly be becoming dehydrated because they sweat and don't even know that they're sweating. And suddenly such people complain about like severe headaches and wondering what's going on. Why is my head aching this badly? Maybe I need to take a Tylenol, said one lady. No, it's not the Tylenol that's going to take care of the problem. It's about replacing the fluid that you have been losing and not being aware of it. So depending on the cause, that's how we address the problem. I've tried to give you here a few examples of situations that you might encounter in the clinical setting. First we have the surgical patient. Fluid loss in surgery may lead to electrolyte imbalance. And I have seen patients who have brain surgery, especially those who have intervention like for um, transphenoidal. And when the pituitary gland becomes involved, they dump so much urine. My goodness, you can have a whole liter of urine dumped in about 10 minutes. These patients have to have DDAVP to replace, to stop what the problem, uh, the cause of the problem, which is usually lack of antidiuretic hormone. Here we have another patient who is in respiratory distress, and this patient had an arterial blood gas done, and what the problem would be is replacement of sodium bicarb, which is often done in a code blue, depending on what the gas says. And then there's another problem, high potassium. Yes, it can lead to EKG changes. In fact, what you get is a mimic of what we might call um, an MI. And these patients are given coexalate, sometimes by mouth or enemas, to get to bring the potassium down. Patients in renal failure sometimes had their potassiums have to be limited and their sodiums. Now if you would go to sessions 24 electrolyte imbalances it's more complete than this one. You have tons of information on what are electrolytes, signs and symptoms of imbalance, causes of imbalance, hyponatremia, hypokalemia, hypomagnesianism, um, and hypoperkalemia, tons more. So I hope you've benefited from this. Have a great day.